Pat Kong said earlier, I know that Jai uh, Summer Nor Yang very busy. And so this morning we're going to be uh, in the Word of God together. And um, uh, we have been through a lot. You know, and so this morning I just want to uh, remind us about uh, what it might look like to make disciples. And we see how that uh, is in the Word of God this morning. So over the last two weeks, uh, we have seen some truths about uh, disciple making. Uh, we have seen some truths about uh, the reality of making disciples. And we saw this through uh, the Old Testament, Beilu. In the Old Testament, Belu Shai Haka to Mose Luneng, Tao Nu Yo, Tao Nu Luneng, Yo Sao, Ha Nu, Kak Yo Yisala Yang Hata, Yo Shua, Yo Tuku Yo, Flong Nu Kok Yo. We saw this in the uh, uh, story of the Old Testament uh, when Moses affirms and when Moses calls upon Israel, and he lets them know that it will be Joshua who is leading them. Right? And it is not anything that uh, Moses could do, or it was not anything that Joshua could do, or the people of Israel, but it was God who would lead them, and it was God who would be with them. And so Moses, he affirms the calling uh, to Joshua to be uh, the one to lead the nation of Israel. And although there is fear, Moses reminded the people that God is with them in every season and every generation. And last week, uh, Sifu Chakong, he also gave us a warning. Then God would also in his righteousness, in his judgment, uh, condemn the disobedience as well. And so this warning about what disciple-making might look like, And so this week, or this morning, uh, in the same way, we are going to see another relationship in the Word of God uh, that speaks a little bit into disciple-making. So thank you, Cha, the New Testament. We're going to see a relationship unfold through the life and ministry of the Apostle Paul and his son in the faith, his disciple Timothy. Okay, this morning. And so we praise God for uh, these letters, right? We praise God for uh, these moments. His word, as he as it gives us an inside look into Paul's relationship with his son in the faith, Timothy, and these words to write and encourage to him. And let me read it for us again. This morning we're going to look at Second Timothy chapter four, verses one to five. All Timothy chong blau ga i mong zung ga chi. And this is what the word of God says for us. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Timote, te lu kuku ha chokono, vang chu ha yesu keto, kuyo lu tsatsi, chokyoto neng kya, ha kyoto neng to, yeng pao hu to shi. Kukhale no choko, chokho yesu, yo lu, ha nu yo kang lu kang tu no. 
có dấu chuyển mô xa tàu khá văn chí dư lưu, chí hà lưu xí hợi tư, là có dấu chuyển khá. Có dấu chuyển ô xa anh đê, khôn đô xô tư lơ, yếu xô tư lơ, lưu nhanh, hát xơ xô tư lơ tư dư. Chó khó chó chinh đê, dấu chí mô tố nên xa nông văn chí dư lưu lơ. Bố yô ô lơ lê bố lưu xa nhà sư, hà bố yô mông chán, đào tư sư phư lưu khá tê giang, gư xô tư lơ nhà nông. Bố yếu chí nhà nông văn chú tư lưu lờ, bố chú nhà nông tê lưng chú sư. Đã xí gạo chí tỏ ô lê bố, gạo yếu chú chú gạo lưu xá, chú lưu xí hờ. Bố xán đê, nhà tê kê chó nhê, mong khá chú mong chông. Há mô xá tỏ ô chó yàng nụ, gù văn chú mô chú gạo ô ô lờ gô tà. Giá bê gông xá tỏ văn chú kê, let us pray. We thank you, God, for this morning. And And so, Lord, we want to lift it all up to you uh, as we discover more and more about your truth, your word, this morning. And so as we look at the relationship between uh, Paul and his son in the faith, Timothy, uh, we ask for your grace upon us, Lord. Teach us uh, and allow us to grow together. Amen. Amen. So one thing that we've been... Uh, doing over the past couple weeks at Wednesday night, uh, we've, we've been learning a little bit about uh, how to share the gospel to other people. We've been learning about uh, how to share the gospel through uh, our testimonies. Right? Wednesday night, Wednesday night, so when I think about sharing uh, the gospel, when I think about teaching God's word to other people, um, it's actually very challenging. Right, it's very challenging. We think and we think and we think and we say, man, it's weird. I don't want to talk about these kinds of things with people. I don't want to talk about uh, the Word of God. What if uh, they don't like me? What if they reject me? You know? And it's funny, one thing that we talked about uh, this past Wednesday, right? It's a little bit easier, right? It's a little bit easier, right? It's very difficult to do this. And yet even for myself, right? For myself, to be honest with you guys, it's hard to talk about the Bible. It's hard to talk about the Word of God all the time, right? Uh, where we grew up together. Right? Even in my own life, right? All those moments, all those times, um, you know, we have fun, right? Everything, right? All of those things. And yet, in all of it, um, for a very few amount of times, do we actually share the Word of God together? Very few moments do we actually speak on the things of God. Like I said, I think about uh, my four brothers. You kind of take that for granted, right? They're, they're there, and so we can talk about whatever, whenever, right? Uh, and this morning, you know, like I said, two of my close friends are right here, right? And so um, maybe in a lot of ways, this is a confession to you guys too, <laughs> right? Of the moments where we could have talked about the things of God, right? That's she beying tan su te yang lu la te no 
Right? We talk about work, we talk about school, we talk about fun and games. So again, for my brothers, I think about this a lot, right? And so uh, I think about my four younger brothers and I think to myself, man, when am I ever going to have those opportunities again? You know? Or what if I only had one opportunity? What if I only had one more chance to speak to them about anything? Right? What would I speak to them about? Would I speak to them about you know, fishing? Would I speak to them about work? Would I speak to them about school? Uh, my hope as I have read the word for us this morning and as I've studied it this week, the conviction, it tells me, it speaks to me. Uh, that hopefully, if I ever find myself in this situation, brothers, I would not speak of the things of this world. Right, if I had one last opportunity to speak with my brothers, to share with them about anything, it would be about their faith. My hope is that I can encourage them as they grow in their faith. And this morning as we read 2 Timothy, uh, this is exactly where we find the Apostle Paul. This is exactly where we find the Apostle Paul. And so two weeks ago, Pipu had the most eluding your soul. Hanu, um, so go your sure, yo, 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 it is the end of Paul's life. He is imprisoned, and he probably knows that uh, there will not be many other times, many other opportunities for him to share with Timothy. And so these are his last words, his last encouragements to his son in the faith. So Paul's plea to Timothy here in chapter 4 is that he would continue to grow in his ministry. So what does he write him? We are at the end of the letter to Timothy here, and we will see one truth this morning. The truth that we will see this morning um, in 2 Timothy chapter 4 is that true disciples preach God's word in every season. True disciples preach God's word in every season. Right, in our lives, in our ministries, uh, in our day-to-day -day living, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, let us speak of God's word. Let us speak of the things of God. And this is uh, Paul's final charge to Timothy. Yeah. And this is one of the last things that he writes to him, and so it must mean that it is very important. Yeah. And as disciples, as uh, disciple makers, we must also see it as the utmost of importance for us as well. We must preach and teach the word of God. Yeah. 
And so this morning we will ask this question of why. Right? Why must we teach the word of God? Why must we preach the word in every season? There are two reasons that we're going uh, to see this morning. The first reason that we see uh, is that we preach the word of God to bring people up in their faith. The second thing that we're going to see is that we preach the word of God to fulfill our calling as disciples. All right, so two reasons. We bring people up in their faith and we, and we do it to fulfill our calling as disciples. Y'all, <laughs> have and so it seems very simple, right? It seems like things that we've heard many times in a church, uh, but it is just a reminder for us again. Right? And I'm sure he said this many times. And so we speak in the same ways this morning to encourage us. So let us take a look at that first one together. We preach the word of God to bring people up in their faith. Paul writes that in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, right, there will be judgment upon people one day. Right, there will be judgment one day for everyone's faith. Right? And it is either uh, their faith that they have placed in Jesus, or it is their faith that they have placed in the things of this world. And so God is the, the ultimate judge. But for us who are believers, we are um, urged to continue to do the work that God has called us to. Right? I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. And so through all of this, we must continue to do the work that we are called to. Everyone will face it. Where is your faith? And Paul is writing, he is encouraging, and he is telling the people that in all of these things, the most important thing, preach the word. And so for us as disciples of Jesus, uh, let us preach God's word to encourage and teach others as they grow. And Paul mentions a few ways how here in this verse. We are to be ready in season and out of season. Right? This means that whether these things are popular or not, whether these things are convenient or not, we must continue to teach it. Right? What does this mean? You call example, Jope, my. It's not very pretty to hear. It's not very uh, good to listen to. Right? I think me and Sufu Chakon, we talk about this all the time. Man, uh, the end times and judgments and God's wrath, it's a little bit scary. 
they ain't chi san ka ha. But the reality is, in season, out of season, be yo chu ka thing though. Whether it is popular, whether it is convenient or not, we have to speak upon these things. For it is God's word, it is truth. And the second way that we can do this is in reproving and rebuking. We must correct and hold others accountable. Reprove and rebuke. We must correct and hold others accountable. And the Word of God does this for us, y'all. His righteousness, his holiness, we must uphold to y'all. And so, uh, it is an opportunity to encourage, rebuke, how reprove them. And the third thing that we see here that Paul mentions in verse 2 is to exhort with patience. We are to train and equip knowing uh, that it takes time. It takes time. And so Paul encourages us as, as we teach the word in all that we do, we must be patient, we must encourage. Uh, continue to grow. And so we preach the word of God to bring people up in their faith, right? We preach, people, we preach the word of God so that they would be encouraged and that they would continue to grow. And so why is this so important, y'all? Why is this so important? If we do not preach the word of God, people will begin to seek the truths of God elsewhere. If we do not preach the word, they will seek truth elsewhere. And we see this in verses 3 and 4. Bible this morning. For the time is coming. When people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. They will turn away from the listening of the truth and wander off into myths. So we live in a, a culture and a society today uh, that teaches us right? there are people out there in the world that will tell us that there is no such thing as absolute truth. Yeah. Right? All these truths, all these things, right? We live in a culture today, in society, that will claim that there is no absolute truth. Right? Those who are uh, believers, God is the only truth. Yeah. We live in a world where people only want to hear what they want to hear. They only want to hear the things that will sound good. Yeah. If things are too critical, if things are too hard, 
or if we um, are too offensive, or if we offend, or if we uh, do things that are uh, too outside of uh, the norm, then we get, uh, the term is canceled, right? And they only want to uh, hear what they want to hear. They only want to see the truth that they want to see for themselves. On the other hand, all we hear about is, is the prosperous Christian life. Right, they speak of these things. If you work hard enough, if you do enough, then God will bless you. Right, we hear these kinds of truths that are actually only half truths. And so we live in a world today where all of these things, right, as Paul mentions here, Right? The time is coming where people will not want to hear sound teaching, but instead, they will turn to the ways of this world. It's okay. Right? That's the world that we live in today. There are outside influences that can shape us, that begin to, to move us, y'all. Sunday, we're here. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. You know, shy TV, everything, all these things that begin to shape and influence our views on who our God is. All right, we go to school and uh, you have a classmate or you have a professor who has a different political view than you. Right? You go to work, uh, you speak about your faith, but um, your other co-worker is actually Buddhist, right? So, just as an example. You are in college and you want to join all these clubs and you see that uh, there's all different kinds of options. Yeah. All these outside influences that can shape the way our young people view God, right? And I think this uh, example, I think for some of you young people, you guys might actually enjoy it. Uh, I remember when I was uh, teaching children's church at, uh, um, back in Denver. Yeah, so Super Shakong, he said it earlier, right? He taught fifth grade in Fresno. I taught fifth grade in Denver. Yeah. <laughs> and so I remember uh, after church, he, the, the student, he came up to me uh, and he said, Sam, I have a question for you. Right? You were talking about God today, and I have a question for you. Who would win in a fight? Yeah, who would win in a fight? Uh, God or Goku? I knew Nuku, Lino. Who would win in a fight? God or Goku? And I said, man, that's an interesting question. You know, like, clearly God would win, right? Clearly God is the greatest, yo. But I asked him, uh, but where did you get that? Where did you get that question? Like, how did that come to mind? And he just looked at me, and he said, oh, you know, I was just watching a YouTube video the other day, and I wanted to know your opinion, right? We shy YouTube, we shy TV, and I just wanted to see what you thought, right? Because there were people arguing, there were people debating on who would win in a fight, God or Goku, from Dragon Ball Z, right? So this is just one small example, right? Topish Shaina, it seems maybe a little bit ridiculous. It seems a little bit crazy, right? But the reality is, it is even these little things, right? These little moments where you see that uh, it actually shapes the way that people view God. Right? They yang humblat, they know they yang your influence, yang your, it'll speak to ko cheng hu pelu neng. And so if we are not constantly in the word, if we are not constantly speaking about the things of God, then the reality is, the smallest little thing will begin to shape us in how we view our God. We hear different truth claims that, like I said earlier, right, that are maybe half-truths, maybe twist the actual truth of God. For example, people will say all the time, right, God is love. Right? There's no way he cannot possibly 
do that, right? We hear it all the time, right? God is so loving. I know that. I trust that. There's no way that he will let people uh, burn in eternity, right? There's no way that he will judge people because God is love. Again, that is half true. God is love. But they forget that God is also holy. God is also righteous. And in our sinfulness, we cannot be in his presence apart from Jesus Christ. And again, that is the hard truth that we are called to preach at times. And so if we do not preach the word and if we do not teach the word of God, the things of this world will actually begin to win people over. So we are called, we are charged to preach the word of God as it brings people up in their faith. And as they grow in their faith, it will allow for true growth in the word of God. The second thing that we see this morning, we preach the word of God to fulfill our calling as disciples. And we see this at the end here in verse 5. It is a, a calling. It is something that God has actually called us to do. And we see that in verse 5. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. So there are many truths in this world. That is the claim, y'all. But we know as disciples of Jesus, as Yon Jing, the Ju Yesu. There are many people in this world, uh, people we encounter uh, every day who no longer hold to the truth of God's word. Uh, but the question for us as we reflect, is this, right? What about you? So what will you choose to do? What will you choose to do? And in verse 5 here, Paul, again, writing this encouragement to Timothy. He encourages him to persevere. No matter what may come, he is called, he is encouraged to be strong in the truth of God. And as we read through 2 Timothy, Paul actually mentions a few names in this letter. He actually mentions a few names in this letter of fellow brothers who have actually strayed away from the faith. Fellow brothers that uh, Paul has 
um, disciples, fellow brothers that, that Paul has invested in, but they have strayed away from the faith. And so he writes to Timothy again, um, right? and his last encouragement, the last thing that he says to Timothy is to continue to preach the word and to persevere, to be strong in every season to preach God's word, to preach his truth. And so he is encouraging, he is teaching, he is pleading with Timothy to stay on the path of righteousness. And so it is our calling as disciples to preach the word. It is our calling as disciples to speak the things of God to others. So again, right, this is Paul in his final encouragement, his final hope, right? Preach the word of God, teach it to others. And so if there's anything that we can uh, do in this life, if there's any mark that we can leave in this world, it is that we were actually a true disciple of Jesus Christ. And the funny thing about that is, is us leaving that mark, us leaving that legacy is actually not even about us, it's about God. Earlier in 2 Timothy chapter 2, if we read a little bit back, uh, he writes uh, that Timothy would know these things and that he would teach it to others so that they would also teach it to others. And so he has discipled him to know God and his truth, and he is encouraging Timothy to disciple others as well. And so we preach the word, we share the gospel, we speak of the things of God in hopes that uh, maybe 10, 15 years from now, right, our children would know the truths of God. Right? That is the hope as we preach the word of God, as we are strong and as we persevere uh, in our ministries. Right, every Sunday, uh, like I said, right, the past, uh, this past year, I've been teaching the kids a lot. And after every uh, Sunday, go tell your parents uh, what you learned today. Go and share this truth that you learned with your parents. <laughs> And so I guess I can ask the parents today after church, go ask your child uh, what they learned today and share with them what you guys learned today. And as you guys share, encourage them to continue sharing. Share it to you. And then talk about it. Share it. When you guys go uh, to your friend's house, share it. When you go uh, to uh, whatever you may be doing, school, work, share it. And so may our lives be uh, just a continual uh, teaching of God's word. It seems very easy, y'all. Uh, but I think in our lives it's very hard, it's very difficult. But my hope, my encouragement for us is that the teaching and the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ will never end. So as we make uh, disciples here at First Moment Alliance Church, as we go into this world uh, and make disciples, again, there is weight, there is importance in what Paul is saying to Timothy. There's a lot of weight, importance on what it means to continually Preach the word of God. 
So again, as we go out, may we do this not just one time, two, three times, infinity times. So we thank you, uh, we thank God for his word uh, this morning. Preach the word in every season. We preach the word of God in every season. So Lushi Her Bet Yon Jang Gochu Ka Vanchu Lulu. Let us pray. Vanchu this morning be or kacha chukatsu ke lu. Be or kacha chukatsu lu. As you have inspired the Apostle Paul to write to his son in the faith, Timothy, a simple encouragement, a simple hope to preach the word in all that he does, Lord. And we know as disciples, our lives as your children, you have called us to do the same. And so, Lord, we put our faith and trust that you are leading us, that you are guiding us, that you are moving in us so that we would be faithful to you, God. And so we trust in you with our lives. We trust in you that we would remember these truths. Again, this calling, this important calling to share your truth, to speak the things of God everywhere we go. So, Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you, again, just for the encouragement, the reminder of what it might look like uh, to be a disciple. So we thank you, we praise you, and we lift up this time to you. In Jesus' name, amen.